Good day and welcome to the channel. In this short video, we are going to provide a full and thorough review of the Boss Game E3 Mini PC. What is this? This is a basic computer that is as powerful as a mid-level corporate computer from about 2019. It's pretty amazing, but it's the size of three or four cell phones, just four or five inches by four or five inches by maybe an inch and a half. It's tiny. And you can actually bolt it to the back of your monitor if you want to get rid of uh, all of your cable problems just to make them all pretty. This video is completely unsponsored. We don't, we've never even heard of Boss Game before, but we need this for one of our corporate clients who needs to run a whole lot of presentations on a lobby screen. So we're using this primarily for digital signage, but they also want to be able to run some more complex geophysical software on it. This ships with Windows 11 Professional, not Windows 11 Home, one of the big advantages over some of the other products. And note that Boss Game, we, we don't know anything about them. We had to actually research them before we bought the product. So Boss Game is a small company out of Shenzhen, China, has about 300 employees, uh, started in 2021 or thereabouts, and uh, now it sells most of its product through Amazon and similar online retailers. We got this through Amazon. We paid $188 Canadian for it. It was on sale down from 208 or something. You should be able to buy it in the US for let's call it $140, something like that. And the primary reason we bought this was because of the CPU. The CPU in this is an Intel N150. And you, I'm sure you'll roll your eyes and say, look, this is techno speak. I don't know what that means. Okay, well, let me just give you a brief primer. New Intel CPUs have what are called performance and efficiency cores. Performance cores are the high powered ones that make all the news. Efficiency cores are way smaller, use way less electricity. So they don't use very much as far as resources go. But those efficiency cores do most of the work on your computer. They're running most of your operating system. When you're running Word and Excel and doing normal surfing, that's what's doing the actual work, the efficiency core. This only has efficiency core. And we did a lot of research, uh, which you can see on our website, www.urtech.ca, explaining which chips are the better chips and which ones are older or newer, blah, blah, blah. This chip from Intel came out in January of 2025, and you might, be shopping and say, well, I know there's an N200 and that's probably better. Well, you'd think so, but it's actually not. It's actually a step down, but because it has a few more GPU capabilities, they called it a 200. The 250 is better, but this is the 150 and this makes it incredibly cheap and very inexpensive. This unit shipped with 16 gig of RAM and a half terabyte M.2 SSD. It also has two HDMI ports and a USB-C port capable of display port. So you can, in theory, connect three monitors to this. Amazing! Now you can actually upgrade the RAM and we're going to pull this apart and show you that. We'll do a disassembly of it. This is running DDR4-2600, which is not the fastest RAM in the world, but it's fantastic for almost every normal use. If you're a standard office worker or a home user, just wonderful. And the CPU isn't just one CPU, it's actually four cores. So there's four of those efficiency cores in here, which makes this thing pretty powerful. This is about as powerful as an Intel i5, you know, mid-range one from 2019. One of the other things this has that, for instance, the older AMD Ryzen chips don't have is the ability to hardware decode AV1. And you might think again, AV1, what's this? It's just more techno speak. AV1 is what YouTube is now broadcasting through and Netflix is going to. So AV1, is an important codec and it's built right into the hardware here. Can other chips like old AMD Ryzen chips and older Intel chips for that matter decode that? Sure they can, but they do it through software, which means it's being done through the main CPU, chewing up resources. All right, let's get to unboxing and disassembling this thing and then we'll provide a summary review. All right, somebody always wants to see the box. So there it is, basically nothing on it. All right, so this is what you get. Mounting bracket, you don't need it, but you get it. HDMI cable, good to know. And a power supply, also good to know. Let's go over the ports. You've got two USB 3.2 ports, USB Type-C port, which supports 4K up to 60 hertz. Headphone jack, power button, nothing. Two more super speed ports, 
two HDMI ports, and these aren't just regular HDMI ports, they're HDMI 2.0 ports. Most HDMI ports are HDMI 1.4. It'd be better if these were 2.1, but it's okay with 2.0. And these both support 4K at 60 Hertz. There's a gig network port, except it's not just a regular gig network, it's 2.5 gig which you're probably not going to use. You're probably going to use the Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi in here is probably one of the only disappointments. It's Wi-Fi 5. And Wi-Fi 5, that's generation 5, is just fine. That's probably all you have at home and in your office. But Wi-Fi 6 has come and now is starting to fade out as Wi-Fi 7 comes in. Let's pull it apart. So you will need a specialized, very small Phillips screwdriver. Phillips is the star. This is a little tab. Just pull it up. Pretty cool. There's your SSD and that's a full 2280, 22 mm millimeters by 80 millimeters, which means you can put a, a four terabyte in here if you wanted to replace the 512. And there's your DIMM slot. To replace the memory just by prying those open, popping that out. That's about all there is to it for upgrades. The CPU and the CPU fan are on the other side. To get to that, we'd have to pull out these four screws. And if you ever do that, make sure you blow it out because there's always some dust and crud in there. And while we're waiting for this to finish setting up, let's take a look at how you mount this little guy to the back of your monitor. On the back here, you'll see there are two screw holes. You take your mounting bracket and you screw them in there. And then you take the whole unit around the back of your monitor. And most monitors have a, what's called a VESA 100. So this is a hundred millimeters apart. You take two screws out, pop that bracket on with the computer hanging off of it, and you're good to go. Boom! Instant all-in-one with tidy cables. All right, I just pressed the power button to bring this up from scratch so you can see how long it's going to take to come up. And you can see it's going to be pretty fast. Now, one of the things I would say is that this is definitely not as fast as an i5 from, say, 2019. Uh, maybe closer to an i3. The point is, pretty good. You can see it responds quickly. Task Manager comes right up. Settings come right up. Everything is just popping away. There's no lags or problems. Okay, so here's the review of the Boss Game E3 Mini PC. What's wrong with it? Well, not a lot, but a couple of things. And none of, none of these things you probably care about. One, it's a plastic chassis, not a metal chassis. If you buy an Intel NUC, you know, next unit of computing, similar kind of unit, you'll find it's just a better build quality. Do you care? Uh, probably not. It, this is certainly sufficient. And for, you know, $150, we'll say US, what do you want? <laughs> it's amazing. The next issue with it is that uh, support is going to be challenging. It's all email based. And if you have to return it or whatever, it's going to be a pain, which is why you want to make sure you play with it quite a bit within the first, say, 30 days with Amazon, because that's where these are mostly sourced from. And if you have a problem, you can return it through Amazon and that's the better way to go. Because dealing with a company afterwards, a bit of a pain. They're in China, you know, I'm not, and you're probably not, so yeah. The next thing that's wrong with it, and again, very minor. It, this runs Wi-Fi 5, the fifth generation of Wi-Fi, not Wi-Fi 6 and now Wi-Fi 7. Why they chose to do that, I don't know, but that's what's on it. Now, you probably only have Wi-Fi 5. You probably don't have Wi-Fi 6 or 7 in your office or at home, but you might. As far as transferring files and things go, i moved all kinds of things. No speed issues at all. Very nice through the Wi-Fi. And you could also plug it in. It does have a 2.5 gig network port on it, which is pretty nice. Okay, what's right with it? Number one, super small. Number two, super quiet. Number three, quite powerful. I mean, look. But can you use this for games? Well, any basic game. You know, if you want to play Solitaire or some first-person shooter from 2005 or 2010 or something, it's probably just fine. But if you want to play the high-end games like World of Warcraft or something, yeah, good luck. It's just not, not going to operate. But that's not what you're buying this for because the primary benefit of this computer is that it's running Windows 11 Pro with a full warranty and ongoing support from Microsoft for a whopping $150 US. That's just as good as it gets. So for normal surfing, watching YouTube videos, blasting through Facebook and things, wonderful tool. If you just want to use Word and Excel, those kinds of things, fantastic, great device. 16 gig of RAM and 512 gigs, so half a terabyte of disk space, absolutely great for this price. And that Intel N150 CPU as we keep saying, certainly isn't the strongest CPU on the market, but it's more than enough 
for your average consumer. And if you are one of these Windows 10 people that needs to get to Windows 11 and you don't want to spend any money, this is the way to go. You get this whole machine for about the price of a Windows 11 license. And this is no doubt better than what you had and a heck of a lot more secure. So hey, if you found this video useful, big thumbs up to be appreciated. Subscribe's also appreciated. And if you have any questions or concerns, you can always get a hold of us directly at www.urteth.ca. That's www.urtech.ca. Or you can leave a question or comment below. And if we don't get back to you, somebody else will, because on YouTube, everybody's got an opinion. Thanks and have a great day. Bye-bye.